Good morning, millennials. Welcome back to the Toast and Happy Tuesday. Hope everybody's having a great day. It's a Tuesday that for us, not to brag, feels like a Friday. This is our last show of the week before we head into the Thanksgiving weekend, which is very exciting. Hey, Jax, how you turn? I'm darn good. It's a Tuesday. It feels like a Thursday because we still have a lot of work to do before we can really enjoy the holidays. It's true. It's true. So while this is our last official show of the week, there's much to be done. There's much to do over at our Patreon. Patreon.com slash the toast is where you can go this holiday if you're missing your girls. Yes, we will be dropping episodes for the rest of the week on Patreon to make sure everybody is well taken care of because the holidays can be difficult. But one thing making the holidays less difficult is our holiday merch drop. So yesterday we launched our Wenchmas sets on shoptoastmerch.com. The shop will be open for a little bit longer. Want to make sure everybody can get their orders in whatever size they want. It's all for pre-order, but we will close the shop soon to ensure that we can start production and get everybody shipped out as soon as possible. So make sure to head to shoptoastmerch.com. As Jackie said yesterday, you don't have to rush, but make haste if you will. Yeah, like do it in a timely fashion. We don't have forever. We don't. I mean, the limit does exist. Do you want to hear something crazy? Always. It there, There's like a small chance that it snows today. And you will see the snow. And I have to say, it does feel bittersweet. Because if I do see the snow before Christmas in my apartment, like I will be so, I will feel warmth and I will feel joy. But it wouldn't feel right experiencing it without Theo. Yeah, because Theo is still in the hospital. Yes, he's not home yet. He probably won't be for like, I would, I'm just guessing the rest of the week. You think he'll spend Thanksgiving there? I do. Which sucks balls. Yeah. I don't really have an update for anyone. Today is like a big day. The truckers for Theo are outside. The outpouring of love. I just want to say the outpouring of love for Theo. I was reading the comments and of course the truckers as well with their horns. Like, did you see all of that? There was so much love and prayers for him. So part of the reason why I was going to, like, I almost didn't talk about it on the toast, but part of the reason that I did is, like, when I spoke about Theo's heart murmur, so many people were like, my cavalier, my dog has a heart murmur. Like, he's fine. So I just was, like, really hoping for that sort of feedback and people being like, oh, my God, I experienced the same thing. My dog had a tumor on his throat. My dog had a tumor on his liver. And hearing those sorts of positive stories, like, that's really why I... I, I spoke about it so I could read that feedback. So I did go searching for those types of comments. And like, I just want to say, someone being like, same thing happened to my dog, literally died a week later. You're not helpful and you need to stop. Sorry that happened to you, but do not share that with me. Right. I meant just the love for the do, aside from, you know, personal testimonies and using like, the, like um, getting medical information, which is also always helpful. That, that's how I felt about my cerclage. Uh, yeah. Yeah. But there's so much love for Dew, Claude. So much love for Dew from the Toast community, but also like people in my life. Like every, I had like, my phone was blowing up yesterday. Just people being Ew. like, oh my God, Theo, what can I do? So, you know, you really realize how many wonderful people you have in your life. That's always like a very small silver line and in situations like this. How many people Theo has touched? Like he is literally a cornerstone of the show. The show is as old as he is. No, 100%. We started the breath like six months before you got Theo. And then we started yeah. the Toast like six months after. He, he is the show he is the show he has a big day today he has a cat scan and a biopsy and i'll know a lot more tonight and then we'll figure it out i was gonna make a little joke that the dog is getting a cat scan <laughs> yeah it would be funny if theo was a dog you know it would be that would be funny that's why i didn't but make he, the joke but he's not because right. it, it's not funny when it's it's inaccurate when it's not true when it's yeah, yeah, inaccurate yeah. I'm so glad we're on the same page there. <laughs> my, my eye, I've had an eye twitch for a week. You know when like your eye involuntarily like just moves? Yeah, but no one like, can see lid. it, so you sound crazy. Crazy. It is bothering the fuck out of me. Maybe close your eyes. Don't give him I an mean, opportunity. I've been thinking about maybe securing an eye patch. Like if I wear it for like 24 to 48 hours, maybe it'll stop. Maybe, but I also feel like you just want to wear an eye patch. I definitely like... I, I see the content that comes with an eye patch, and I'm definitely excited by that. Yo ho, yo ho, attorney's life for me. Arr! <laughs> Jackie, how are you doing? I'm doing well, and I'm glad to see that you are doing well and that you found, you know, something. Trying. You know, sp your spirits seem well given the situation, and that's that's all we can hope for at the moment. I'm trying. Yesterday was like the worst day. Like I literally canceled my whole, whole day, laid in bed, took a bath, did nothing. And then I had this dinner party that like, honestly, I was just dreading. I did not want to leave the house. I was in such a bad mood. And as we were leaving, I'm like, oh, why did I agree to this? And when I got back in the car after, I 
was so glad that I went. I had such a nice time. It was like a Jewish dinner party with just like a bunch of different Jewish celebs, influencers, like media people. And it was just like such good food, kosher food. We had brisket. It was actually like one of those uplifting. Um, booing. Booing and just a really a fabulous night. And then I came home and watched the second half of the Kansas Philly game. And that was fabulous too. So things are, you know, I don't have any info on Theo, you know, in terms of turning around, but my spirit, I feel like whatever I put out will affect the outcome of the results. And like, I need to be putting out positive energy. You need to be manifesting. No, I need to be putting out positive energy. Okay. I mean, I agree with you. I didn't get to watch the game because I couldn't get my TV on in my bedroom and I was too lazy to fix it. So I just kept texting Zach for updates where I would walk out for a snack and find out who's winning. You know, you could like Google it too. My TV? No, I mean, you could oh. Google how to, that, but you could also just Google the score. Yeah, but it's just like a waste of thumb movements. And at the end but of But you the, were texting Zach anyway. No, but like we were just, we talk, you know? Right, And right. I was going for my snack, so it, it worked out. The Eagles won, I'm happy for them. It was a crazy game because they didn't really have any sort of lead until the very, very end. And it was like, they got their shit together at the end, right, as like Patty and the team were just like kind of stinking it up. And it was like a bad game for Travis Kelsey, which he really doesn't have, but he turned over the ball, he fumbled like a few times. I mean, his girl's going through it. Yeah, maybe they're just like connected energy-wise, and when one of them is, you know, down. kind of like Z Zayden and Violet. Like, when one of them is down, the other one carries that with them. Yeah, which is, you know, beautiful poetically, but not really for career-wise. I obviously like was enjoying the game. I wasn't particularly rooting for anyone. If I was, I think I, if I had to think about it hard enough, I would have been rooting for the Eagles. Cause I don't know why. I just feel like everything happens for the Kansas city chiefs. Like so easily. Do you know what I mean? Like they're just like always winning. I just feel like it's not even hard for them. Yeah. I'm happy that the Eagles had their shine. No offense during an irrelevant game. Like where was oh, this let's talk energy about that. in February? Jackie got, fucking roasted to <laughs> filth in the comments yesterday like she was wrong we know that but no you guys calm down i think i have to issue like a disclaimer about when we talk about sports and that doesn't and what you're about to say doesn't mean we're going to stop talking about sports because we're learning we we're love Jackie. talking about sports but i guess and I we're have listening to, and we're learning i guess i have to say and because it wasn't clear we are not sports experts we we're have not. really a very limited idea of what's going on at any given time we're very new to all of this and we're learning as we go, yet even as we learn things, we forget them. And, and we, we still make mistakes. And we, don't, and we don't know them for the next time. We don't know how all this works. And honestly, they make it confusing for a reason. They don't want you to know. So true. So yeah, the game technically wasn't irrelevant and thirsty, but it felt that way. And but it's been on the schedule like since it, day one. Yes, it's been on the schedule since last year. So it wasn't thirsty for Taylor. But I also wanted to clarify, like it felt thirsty for Kelsey Bowl because the last Super Bowl, like I didn't see, you know, a Bengals Rams matchup. Nobody gives a shit. Like people care about Kelsey Bowl. So they're capitalizing sure. on the brethren. And that's all I was saying. And when I, I was watching adjacent to Zach last night and I was like, Tell me about this game. Like, is it a little thirsty that the NFL put it on? Like, is it something that would have happened? First of all, he starts trying to explain the NFC West mm, no. AFC. Claudia, I wish I, I could have, I wish I could have recorded it because I've never heard a more com like. Not only is it confusing inherently, he did a bad job explaining it. <laughs> <laughs> so I left even more confused. But he did say, "Yeah, it's a little bit, you know, they're trying convenient, convenient, yeah." Yeah, so I just need everyone to calm down. Like, it's so funny when you like poke a certain community and you don't realize, like that's what happened to me when I said that, the, and I stand by what I said, The Bear was a bad show. You don't respect waiters. Like, oh my God, calm down. I just said it was a bad show. No, I like, saw a comment that was like, you know, roasting, going so hard, like rude to me like, for not getting this football thing right and calling the NFL thirsty. I would literally think it was Roger Goodell writing it. Yeah, no. Like who sometimes... else has that much of a personal stake in me shading the NFL? No, that's the thing. Like that's the inter very interesting part of this job. When we talk about a wide breadth of Bread things. The, of, yeah, breadth with a D. of things. Sometimes you'll find a community you didn't even know existed that's extremely passionate. Yeah. You you need to calm down. Yeah, in the words of Taylor Swift. Also, I got to thinking last night when I was watching the game. Because I feel like, you know, 
there are a lot of famous football players who are like famous in culture and most of them are the quarterbacks it's just like a, a, a position that's ripe with fame and I was comparing Patrick Mahomes to Jalen Hurts, who is the Eagles quarterback. Yeah. And it got me thinking, like, why Jalen Hurts isn't more culturally famous. Like, his team was in the Super Bowl. His team is amazing. They've been very good for a very long time. He's a very handsome young thang. And then I was comparing him to Patrick Mahomes, who's, like, in a Skims ad. And, you know, I just find, like, why, why isn't he more famous? And not outside of football. I, I don't have the answer, but if I might theorize, which I'm sure everyone will then hand my ass to me again. Uh, first of all, how long has he been the quarterback? I feel like at least like three years. Okay, no, that's not like a, a really long time, but also I think being a quarterback is inherently, you know, you're in the spotlight, but I think you can also choose how much you want to do outside of football. Like, right, Patrick Mahomes, I think he likes the fame and he wants to do ad campaigns and he's like a silly goofy personality guy and like wants to put himself out there but I don't think that's for everyone it is his third season with the Eagles and like they've been good for three seasons you know and they've always been good but like but I also feel like aside from Jason Kelsey I don't know many I don't know the names of any Eagles players I feel like they're more of a team and less of like a one-man show I actually know quite a few. I'm familiar with Lane Johnson. I'm familiar with Rick Lovato. And that's because their wives are toasters. So I understand that that's, you know, like a me thing. Yeah. I was also going to say, oh, another thing I was wrong about. I really felt last night like the Chiefs were going to win this. Yeah. And then there would be a Super Bowl Chiefs-Eagles matchup and then the Eagles would win. Right. That's a good theory, but it didn't come to fruition because they won last night. But I was also really happy that they won. One, because I said, like, I just feel like sometimes everything is so easy for the Chiefs. Like, I'd like to see, like, somebody work for it, and that was nice. But also, Jason Kelsey was 0-3 going into this game against his brother. He's never beat his brother. And, you know, he's the older brother, and I feel like he's, you know, often overlooked because Travis is Travis. So for him to have gotten, you know, a win... I'm happy for him. What's so funny, though, is in their family dynamic and the way that Travis sees it, he's always trying to catch up to Jason. Yeah, well, they play different positions, so you can't really, like, evenly compare them. No, but, like, of, like his whole life, like, Jason played football, so he played football. Jason did this, and I think there was, like, some scandal when they were they were yes. in college together, and, like, I think Travis always feels like he's in Jason's shadow, but the way that we know them, it's, like, Travis first. Yeah. So I was not happy that Jason got like a moment and I Ben was like, we could turn it off. I'm like, no, I need to see the brothers hug on the field. Like the game isn't over yet. And Jason was like so happy. And I know Travis the game was, like, Miz. wasn't irrelevant in terms of like counting towards their overall seasons, but like it's n I just I wish they won like a Super Bowl sort of game like this to me. I know it's not, but like it still feels like a scrimmage. Like it's not the game. So now the Eagles are 9-1. and one. They've only lost once, and do you know who they lost to? The 49ers. J-E-T-S. They Jets. lost Jets. to the, the worst, Jets? They lost to the worst team in the league, which is so interesting. And the Chiefs are now 7-3. and three. Yikes. Yikes. Because, like, I don't know why I just, if I had to just, like, say which team I thought was better, like, I would say the Chiefs. Maybe they just get more hype. Yeah, and we just are watching their games. Yeah. So I was happy for the Eagles girlies, the e-girlies. Yeah. Happy. And it was very interesting. For them. And then this is Thanksgiving weekend, so apparently there's some big matchups, you know, some age-old rivalries, like the Lions are playing someone. I'm not, like, really familiar with that matchup. Me neither, but I know the Cowboys play every Thanksgiving Thursday. I don't know who they're playing, but Dolly Parton is a halftime show. Oh, Jack Harlow is the halftime show. I saw it on TV um, for Thanksgiving as well. Probably like a different game. game. Yeah. Um, okay, here are the, the here is the lineup. Packers Lions, apparently an age old beef. Very Midwest. The Commanders. The, that's Washington, formerly football club, formerly. Oh, they're not offensive football club anymore. No, they they got a name. I mean, football club like never really made sense. It sounds like something from Ted Lasso. No, it's like we could all we're all football clubs, right? Why are you different? Um, I don't like the commandeers, commanders. I don't like it. it now it reminds me of Fourth Wing Commandment. Hatchet. Yes. So they're playing the Cowboys. Oh, and then the 49ers are playing the Seahawks. Draft day. Why draft day? Does that movie not take place in Seattle? No. Cleveland, what, of course. 
Cleveland, of course. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, so that's Thursday, Thanksgiving Day. Then Friday, ooh, this is a very Jewish game. Okay. Let me guess. Like, Jets yeah. versus Giants? So close. Jets versus Dolphins? Yes. <laughs> that's like the most Jewish game on the planet. Like, I can't explain it to you if you don't get Fins it. Fins up. Fins up. I don't know if that's it, but it feels right. The Buccaneers versus the Colts feels irrelevant. Oh, the Patriots versus Giants, a Northeast battle. The Steelers versus the Bengals. And then there's like a million games on Sunday. I'm not going through all these. Okay, cool. I feel like if, oh wait, where are the Chiefs? Maybe they have a bye week? Oh no, they're playing the Vegas Raiders and the Eagles are playing the Bills. I feel like that'll be a good game. A lot of people think those are like the best teams in the East Coast. It's not an East Coast. Oh, yeah, no, Zach was talking about Coast last night in his diatribe about the leagues. About the leagues, right? Like, I don't think the leagues make sense geographically because the 49ers and the Eagles are in the same league. Yeah. They're on opposite coasts. I don't even want to say what I think it is because say I'm it. wrong. Say it. Like, I think there's AFC. Based on, I never thought this until he tried to explain it to me last night. I think there's AFC and NFC. Yeah. And then within those leagues, there's like East, AFC East AFC yes. West. Yes, that's true. Okay. You're literally the meme right now with the math. <laughs> it shouldn't be this hard. No, it shouldn't be this hard. Yet here we are. They just want to keep us down and uneducated. So true. But they don't know. We're women in sports and we can't be stopped. No, and we're going to keep commenting on it as if we know. It's yeah. more fun that way, honestly. No, that's literally my life speaking on things with absolute certainty that like I really know nothing about. Though I just think it's worth mentioning, I wasn't certain yesterday when I said this. I, I, mm, I don't know. You were being pretty adamant. Like, was I? I feel like you're I... You're like, no, Turney, it's a scrimmage. Oh, but there was something I wasn't certain about. <laughs> I can't even remember. Um, so that's your football update. Sorry if your ears are bleeding. We can't be stopped. No, we seriously can't be. We're in our football eras, you guys. I think we're going to try out for the team. <laughs> no, it brings us such joy. Honestly, I could see us down the line becoming like a family that plays flag football on Thanksgiving. That's like a thing. Well, yeah, but we could do that anyway. No, but like now I could see it as a possibility. Yeah, we could have done it before, but now I think like we actually would. Or we should like go to a game as a family. Would love. Who would we go to? We don't even have a team. Oh, I'm a Jet, like I'm a Jets 49ers fan. Like Jets for my soul, 49ers for my Instagram. Okay, so we would go to a Jets game? It depends. Am I visiting you? Are you visiting me? I would go to a, a Dolphins game. Yeah. I just feel like the Dolphins need a rebrand. Like I'm not into their colors. It's so like ugly. Yeah. I feel like ever since Ace Ventura, they never really. Yes. They Dan never, Marino. They, they, yes. They can never really achieve more than that. Jackie, sometimes like we literally have the same brain. <laughs> Dan Marino. Ace Ventura. Head detective. Head detective. That movie's so good. Yeah. That's one of the movies that like I think when we talk about like Mean Girls, like we quote it so much, but I don't think we acknowledge like the impact it had on us. I mean, Hooser <laughs> is from Ace Ventura. So true. No, like that movie was impactful. And like, what a random movie. Like, if somebody were to say, like, what's Ace Ventura Pet Detective about? I would be like, I don't, I, like, I literally don't know. I think there was a, a dolphin died in the same. Went tank. missing. Went missing. Went missing. Also, I'm pet pretty detective. sure that movie is like canceled in Why? some circles and that it didn't age well. Oh, I haven't seen it in a while. Why? I'm going to botch it, but something about the storyline is like, um, woman, a man pretending to be a woman, and I think it's transphobic. Who's pretending to be a woman? One of the villains, something. You know what? Oh, you are right. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I need to rewatch it, and I'll let you know if it stands the test of time. But I sounds like it doesn't. It's been branded transphobic, Turdy. Okay, another one bites the dust. <laughs> um, we've got a great show. We've got five stories, correct? I mean, actually, it's funny that you ask because you never do. Mm -mm. But we actually had six stories and I was thinking during the ad break, I'll whittle them down. But they've whittled themselves because we already discussed one of them. Oh, the game? The game. Oh, okay. That's Which good. is good because I had another Travis story and like, it's just becoming the morning Kelsey over here. So it worked itself out as it always does. 
let me ask you a question. Are you feeling at all fatigued in terms of, I feel like when we talk about a story a lot, it gets like kind of old at some point and it's like there are more stories and you don't know if you should choose them because they're relevant, but like we've been talking about it nonstop. Do you feel any sort of fatigue with the Kelsey Bowl, Taylor, of it all? To, to me, they're two separate things. Like Kelsey Bowl, I'm still juiced up over. Like we haven't talked about the brethren in that long and they're just hysterical and it's just good Good, clean fun. Like I it's support, good, clean fun. I support family. So no, not fatigued on that. The Taylor Travis relationship, I'm not fatigued, but I just need to be mindful of not making it a story every single day and not doing like small potatoes, just big potatoes. The big stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's fair. So that's my, my theory. Let me know if it's working for you guys or, you know, don't let me know. I'll probably continue to do the same thing. So... Just letting you know, my phone is on, just in case I get a phone call, so if you hear anything. Of course. We understand. Thank do, you. Do strong. Without further ado, here are the Fast Five stories that you need to know. And the Fast Five stories that you need to know are brought to you by KiwiCo. Unwrap inspiration with super fun science, technology, and art projects for kids with KiwiCo. With nine different subscription offers, for different ages and subjects, there's something for every kid. When you give KiwiCo, it's so much more than a box of toys. It's the gift of discovery through hands-on experiences, giving kids the tools to learn about topics that they love, from dinosaurs to rocket ships. Tis the season for serious fun. So KiwiCo delivers fun, hands-on projects that inspire a lifelong love of learning. KiwiCo projects spark creative confidence for ongoing tinkering and experimentation. Sure, you can buy a robot, but isn't it way more fun to build your own and way more time-consuming? Because one thing I've learned about being around kids, like they need constant simulation. And that's what's great about KiwiCo. It's like an adventure. It's like, it takes a long time. I feel like you buy a toy, the kid is done with it in 10 seconds and they never want to see it again. But KiwiCo is a box of awesome in every, bu- in every box delivered monthly. When it arrives, it'll be your kids favorite day of the month there's something for kids of all ages from infants and preschoolers to teens and beyond there's no commitment so you can pause the subscription or cancel it at any time and it's designed by a team of educators makers engineers and rocket scientists who brainstorm hundreds of ideas to create the most exciting age appropriate and educational projects these are real engineering science and art projects with high quality materials and with you know the holidays coming up you need a gift for each night of hanukkah kibiko makes a great gift christmas all kwanzaa all holidays. Discover hands-on fun with KiwiCo. Get your first month free on any crate line at kiwico.com slash toast. That's your first month free at kiwico.com slash toast. Today's episode is also brought to you by Papaya. Okay, Jax, are you ready to play a little game? It's called Queen or Wench. Ooh, how fun. Yes, I'm ready. Okay, first question. Is a friend that gives you a pair of fuzzy socks for the holidays a queen or a wench? Wench, such a generic gift. Next. Okay, is a daughter that gives her mom an offensively scented candle for the holidays a queen or a wench? Wench. Okay, last one. Is someone who gives you reusable paper towels from papaya for the holidays a queen or a wench? Oh, that's easy. She's a queen. It's giving eco-friendly. It's giving useful. It's giving unique. It's giving aesthetically cute. See, this is why we're sisters, because I could not agree with you more. I'm sure you remember us talking about papaya a few weeks ago. A ton of you guys bought your own reusable paper towels after we spoke about them. And of course, we love to see that. But for those of you who haven't hopped on the papaya train yet, listen up. One papaya paper towel replaces 17 rolls of disposable paper towels. Jackie and I have both been converted. We have them hanging all around our house, and you will not catch us buying regular paper towels anymore. Now, since the holiday season is upon us, we want to get into why papaya is the cutest, easiest gift for Christmas, Hanukkah, Secret Santa, you name it. First of all, they have adorable festive holiday designs. Designs, and since papaya was founded by a Jewish queen, they also have a Hanukkah design. It's a little jelly donut and we're obsessed. They also just introduced their new reusable gift bags, which are very chic. We might just wear them out to dinner later. Plus, they have four hilarious holiday cards. But it's 2023. We're not going to CVS to buy a bunch of tacky plastic gift bags, and we're not standing around reading a million generic holiday cards until we find the one that sucks the least. With Papaya's Holiday Bundle, you get the gift, you get the bag, and you get the card. Bada bing, bada boom, you're done. I honestly can't think of a better gift for your mom, your mother-in-law, your friends, your colleagues, your hairdresser, your doorman. You need to get someone a gift? Get them Papaya. So go to papayareusables.com right now and use code TOAST for 30% off site-wide. That's it's papayareusables.com, code TOAST. Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah from Papaya. Thank you, La. You're welcome. Our first story. Is it sad? No, I was just reading about the potential hostage deal. I, I wanted oh. to see if it went through, but I, didn't, I don't see anything. Sorry. Got Sir. sidetracked. Um, I'm switching it up, and you know what? I decided I want to talk more about Taylor Travis and Mama Kelsey. Because in his wide-ranging interview with the Wall Street Journal yesterday, and I saw this yesterday, but like I've just been ruminating on it and I want to talk about it. 
Travis talked about how his mom, Donna, regretted her initial response to the awkward Taylor Swift question. So remember oh, on the Today Show? Yeah, she did an interview and it came off that like she was not feeling Dismissive. Taylor, but she just didn't want to overstep and she felt really bad about it. So Donna Kelsey still feels regret over her answer when asked about her son Travis Kelsey's relationship with Taylor Swift during an interview last month. The Kelsey matriarch uh, opened up to Wall Street Journal magazine about her son's budding romance with Taylor. During her sit-down interview on the Today Show in October, she seemingly came off unenthusiastic about Swift, when in reality, she simply didn't want to overstep in oversharing. Once the interview had aired, Travis immediately called his mom to assure her that she did a good job after saying she sp uh, spending time with Taylor was, quote, okay. While yeah. she still looks back in regret over her underwhelming answer, Donna didn't hold back her gushing over Taylor now. She said, I can tell you this. He's happier than I've seen him in a long time. God bless him. He shot for the stars. Like, the story kind of makes me sick. Like, she's, like, you know, lamenting over this interview. She shouldn't have been asked that. Like, she's not a media-trained celebrity. She's just a mom. And I, like, feel bad that she's, like, sitting, stewing, regretting, thinking, and, like, when it happened, she was probably bugging, like, oh, my God, is Travis going to be mad at me? And I don't think Taylor, by any means, I think Taylor's really understanding of, like, how media works, and I don't think she would have thought for a second that, like, Donna Kelsey went on the Today Show to shade, you know, <laughs> her son's new boyfriend. But, like... I, I, didn't, I didn't need her to apologize or like address this. You know what? Like she did what she had to do. I was, when I watched it, I didn't think for a second she was being nasty. I thought for sure she was uncomfortable and she just didn't want to overstep Taylor, who's like this notoriously private person who's the biggest star on the planet. Like, please, Donna, you're fine. Yeah, but I understand why she said just okay. Now I understand why she feels regret because it came off like, oh, I'm so not impressed with right. my new potential daughter-in-law when it's none of those things. Right, like it, I guess if you watched it and you're like an alien visiting for Mars, you could be like, oh, you know, this person's dismissive. Right. But that's so not, anyone with any sort of like critical thinking ability would know that this is much more layered than that, Donna. And I'm pretty sure that's what we said when we uh -huh. mentioned it. Like, uh -huh. it's not this. Speaking of things that are not this, this isn't a story, but it's a perfect segue because Snoop Dogg announced that he's you know giving up smoke yeah. and in his partnership with solo stove he no longer has smoke in his life but he is still smoking marijuana so it was a very sort of elaborate partnership i think it was brilliant honestly yeah. i love solo stove a former toast sponsor come back where have you guys been um and i love the solo stove product and I thought this was great. Like, really, that's how you make waves. It's so hard these days. Like, I feel like everybody's so used to, like, seeing, you know when you're being targeted for some sort of product. Like, uh, consumers are much, like, savvier than they used to be. So it's hard to really, like, pull one over and shock people as a brand. And I think that's what's so exciting about the Super Bowl is, like, everybody does the most. And this was kind of Super Bowl level Yeah, this, I, I was actually thinking when I saw the announcement, I was like, oh, when's the Super Bowl? And I'm like, oh, no, it's not to do with it. But it's something that you would do, like, the week before the Super Bowl and then the commercial commercial airs yep. during the Super Bowl. So I love a brand like doing the most and it's holiday season, Q4, very important time of year. So it was strategic. It was very smart and I enjoyed it. And I think, you know, people who thought about his announcement that he was quitting smoke, you know, they thought of it a little suspiciously and they thought of it, you know, more critically than others like ourselves. Um, they were right. Yeah. I did see it in the article that people were being doubters. I don't know if I would have come to that conclusion on my own. I didn't have the opportunity. No, you're right. You're right. Like I didn't have, everybody else. I when somebody have. said the edible thing, I was like, yeah. But I can't say that I would have because I don't yeah. know. I didn't have the opportunity. I thought this was great. Like I really, they got us, you know? Yeah. I'm sure they paid him a boatload of money to really like for a few days, put his brand up in the air like that. Right. Like kind of offer this sort of questionable message. Yeah. Yeah. No, he must've been paid a lot. But it all worked out. That's like it also out. another brand publicity moment this week. Do you see the Stanley thing? with the Obsessed. So a woman, her car was on fire. I think she got into some sort of, like her car literally blew up. Yeah, like there's no car left really to speak of. It's but ashes. The Stanley that was in her cup holder remained intact. And so. Not, not only that, the ice inside the cup was still in cubes. It hadn't melted from the fire that's insane and as if that's not a good enough endorsement for stanley already like it will withstand all of that the ceo of stanley then bought her a new car right so her video went totally viral she's like you guys look at my car it's like it literally was black ashes like 
fog smoke and then she pulled her Stanley out of the cup holder like it was a little banged up it wasn't perfect but it was perfectly intact and then she shook it and there was ice in there and everybody was like what the video went so viral so then the CEO of Stanley stitched it on TikTok and responded being like this is amazing this is such a testament to how our products are made we so appreciate we're so sorry we're obviously going to replace your Stanley and we're also going to replace a brand new car and it was honestly like the best money marketing could buy like now everybody like feels you know warmly about Stanley as a company like this girl lost her car and they're doing the right thing and going above and beyond by giving her a new car her video was really highlighted the the quality of of their cups I was shook and now everybody just looks at them favorably and they didn't have to spend a lot of money this is like billions of impressions and they've just spent the cost of a car yeah billions of impressions because I think I saw I didn't see her initial video but I saw it as a story because he was buying her a car like brilliant brilliant like there are ways to get creative when you're trying to make waves that is the perfect segue to our next story ah. because our next story is a little more brands getting in on the fun okay chipotle renamed their kansas city location to honor travis kelsey's 2011 misspelled tweet after the hilarious post resurfaced amid his romance with Taylor Swift. So in 2011, Travis Kelsey tweeted, went from class to therapy, now I need some hashtag Chipotle, and then I'm off to check out my new apartment. So Kansas City's Chipotle location renamed themselves Chipotle. Like renamed how, like a new sign? A new sign. Wow. Well, let me say, I don't think Travis's tweet was a typo. A lot of people who like <laughs> who love Chipotle call it Chipotle. Like it's mm. like Target. Okay, so it's it, like a thing people say. So I don't think it was a like mishap or a mistake, but that doesn't make this any less funny and fun. And also, the official Chipotle Twitter account did rename themselves Chipotle at least for you know the day for the time being. And they replied and said, "It's me, hi." Cute, <laughs> cute. <laughs> Cute. No, it's fun. Like, this is where I feel like being the social media manager uh, and social media managing is like a job that's mostly women. They're young girls. And I feel like it's a job that people think is like irrelevant and like they don't put respect on that name. They're like, oh, yeah, Bob from finance, you know. But moments like this, like you really have an opportunity to make so many, so much news, so many impressions. And this is fabulous. A win for the social media managers. Yes, but it is also a fine line sometimes. It's not all just fun and games as a social yes. media manager. As we have discussed, you know, you go out drinking, which account did you post to the Instagram? Pope. The Pope. But also like sometimes brands try and get in on the fun and then the, the party's Cringe. ruined. It's like, no, it's really important that your social me media manager obviously understand like how the world works, but also is an extremely self-aware person. Yeah, and self-aware on behalf of your brand. Yes, yeah, it's a delicate balance. But this hits it out of the park. A lot of brands are really doing good stuff this week. Congrats. Yeah. Congrats, brands. Congrats, brands. And then with the Super Bowl coming up, I mean. The Super Bowl is always coming up. No, but like it's actually coming up now. It's like three months away. For sure. But now it's like the holidays are coming up. So like the brands yeah. go hard. Yeah. Well, that's actually a great segue to our next sponsor, which is Spirit Society having a major Black Friday sale. The segues are on fire today, Turdy Lou. So it's the biggest sale of the year, Black Friday. If you've been waiting for Spirit Society to go on sale, launching tomorrow, the entire site will be 35% off. Plus, I'm not done free shipping and that includes all the new flavors and the fan favorites like pink lemonade and passion fruit in addition to having their biggest sale ever they're also launching two new bundles that are 40 percent off for a limited time only so the, the lemonade stand which features three to four three four packs of pink lemonade and three four packs of lemon the tropical trio which features two packs of four packs of passion fruit peach and pineapple are all 40 percent off so the sale starts tomorrow wednesday and it runs all the way to cyber monday so you have almost a full week to get in on the amazing sale it's the perfect time to stock up for your gift giving needs if you're doing a white elephant or a secret santa also just great to have spritz on hand through the holidays so this is a great time to stock up you know the fridge and the outdoor fridge don't miss out set your alarms at 12 p.m eastern time tomorrow it's running all the way till cyber monday 35 percent off site wide and 40 percent off your two new bundles if you've been on the fence about ordering spritz society now is the time go to spritzsociety.com that's s-p-r-i-t-z society.com the discount will be automatically applied on the website no code needed it starts tomorrow don't miss out thank you la you're welcome fa our next story is more holiday shopping news. Cheermeister? 
The holiday cheermeister this year is Jennifer Lawrence as she laughed off a wardrobe malfunction at the Saks holiday lighting ceremony. Jennifer Lawrence handled a wardrobe malfunction like a pro during the Saks Fifth Avenue holiday lighting ceremony on Monday night. I don't know if it was like a pro, but it did play very well. No, it was cute and funny, but like it wasn't subtle. No, it wasn't subtle. (laughs) The Oscar winner was giving a speech before unveiling the department store and Dior's Carousel of Dreams 2023 holiday window displays when her belt unexpectedly popped off and fell to the ground. It didn't unexpectedly pop off. She goes up to the microphone and she starts to talk and the microphone is so much louder than she anticipated that the sound of her voice scared the shit out of her. So she like jumped back and her belt popped off. Got it. Oh, right. So then she said, I'm so sorry. That was so loud. My That was so loud. My belt popped off. Yeah. yeah when yeah. I saw the video, I thought she was saying her belt popping off was loud. No, no, no. The microphone scared her, which is such a turdy move. Like the sound of your voice scaring you. Never for you. No, no, no. Yes, for me. I'm not talking about my singing voice. I'm talking like I could literally be talking and I'd be like, oh my God. And it was just like my voice scaring oh, me. Oh, you being scared by things. Yeah, yeah. Even if it's something that I'm doing, like talking. Got it. For sure. Yeah. Anyways. Um, she looked gorgeous. Oh my God. She looked gorgeous. Like I'm looking at the pictures of her up there and it's like, is it the lighting or is it her? I mean, I guess everyone looks like. It's her. They also look nice, the other presenters, but she looks unreal. No, she looks sick. I believe she's some like ambassador or face of Dior, which is why she was selected for this partnership. Yeah, she has been a Dior ambassador since 2012. Also, I'm pretty sure it was a Dior belt. So that's really not a great advertisement. Like your belt should stay on even when the microphone's loud. Yikes, so true. But how do you balance that with us now talking about the Saks Dior event, even though we never would have talked about that before, even if she was there and everything went smoothly? Ever, so true. So many impressions now that the toast is talking about it and it'll make up for the loss of belt sales. Right, I think net net, this is a good thing. If I was a social media manager, I would say, don't worry guys, it's good. And what would you tweet about the belt? Back to the factory to (laughs) tighten up those seams. Someone's getting fired. No, like (laughs) I would literally like go to like where they make belts. I don't know, do you make it in like a factory or like a uh, uh, atelier? Yeah, atelier. And I would interview like one of the seamstresses and she would be telling us what she's, you know, reconfiguring so that the belt you buy this holiday season won't snap off. Or maybe it's like interviewing the seamstress and getting to know her story. And maybe, yeah, maybe a seam was skipped, but it's because she's been going through something. No, and then it turns into an episode of Undercover Boss. Yeah. Like they buy her a new house. And a new car and a Stanley. Okay, (laughs) funny, first of all. Second of all, I love that like we are now in the time of year, like the department stores are doing their thing. And even though New York becomes like a torture chamber during the holiday season, because everybody flocks here to shop, to see the big trees, the big Christmas lights at Saks, it's undeniably magical. And this is exciting. This is like the official, you know, start. Yeah. Yeah. Right before Thanksgiving, so exciting. I actually just printed my recipes. I've got to do my holiday shop. It's, yep. it's starting. Yeah, no, when I walked home from work yesterday, this building I pass every day to from to and from work had their big Christmas tree up. They're like a big office building that like has a kind of an iconic tree. Um, and I actually was having such a bad day yesterday, especially after the toast. Like I just, I had nothing left to give. And that tree, like Christmas joy and Christmas spirit, like is real. It's real. The holiday cheermeister is real. Yeah. So thank you, Jennifer Lawrence, because I probably wouldn't have even like known or cared that like the sax thing lit up last night. But okay, let's play a fun game. How would you rank like the major department stores in New York, their window displays? And um, the stores are include Saks, Bergdorf's, Bloomingdale's, Macy's. Bloomingdale's is really bad. Wow, you think so? Yeah, I, I don't know what their holiday is this year, but like that's probably the store that I frequent the most and their windows do nothing. They give they don't inspire me to buy anything. It's They're always, not really on the same level as like Saks or Bergdorf's at all. I think Bergdorf's is number one. That's their thing. But I think everybody else is stepping their pussy up like Saks. Saks, honestly, Saks is a really, really close second. I'll have to see the ones this year to make my decision but you're right like Bergdorf if you ever saw the documentary scatter my ashes at Bergdorf's like they talk about the window displays they're they're like year-round projects they have artists from all over the world working on it for years and years like it's amazing yeah so they have the number one spot but I think people are coming for their neck yeah Macy's is like a lot I think it's like a little tacky what's great about Saks and Bergdorf's is like it's opulence but it's very tasteful and like tailored Saks I mean Macy's is just like lights shit 
trees. Like it's so much. But that's also the holiday. Sometimes you, it's yeah. a little too tasteful, a little too tailored. Where's, where's the nuttiness? Where's the holiday yeah. nut? While Macy's doesn't have the holiday windows like on lock, they do have the Thanksgiving Day Parade, which is one of my favorite things of all time. Even though like the older I get, the more I realize like it's dumb and fake, but I love it. It's so fake. But then but then when you have kids, like the love comes back and you start again. The magic. Let us see who's in the parade this year. What we can look forward I'm, to. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Poon's performances and more. Okay, here's the parade. Route. Yeah, we know it's literally the same every year. Thanks. Oh my gosh. Get to I feel the like fun. the parade is like very last minute, like whoever's available. But it yeah. is last minute now. It's two days away. The parade will be kicked off by multi-instrumentalist and Grammy winner John Batiste. There will okay. be performances by a bunch of people. I'm going to read the people that we know. David Foster and Catherine McPhee. Yeah, they have a Love. new holiday album out. Jesse James Decker. Okay. Pregnant Queen. Ashley Park with some Muppets. Ooh, close your ears. Pentatonics. Okay, I will say the only time it's acceptable to embrace pentatonics is the holiday season, so I'll allow it. And that song that you introduced me to. Oh my God. There can be miracles. Their version, honestly, this might be the craziest thing I've ever said, like is as good as Mariah and Whitney. Like it's really good. It's so good. Also, this is newsworthy for a reason. Broadway will be represented by performances from Anne Juliet, Back to the Future of the Musical, How to Dance in Ohio, Shucked, and Spam a Lot. Will SpongeBob be there? Ethan Slater. Oh my God, maybe Ari will be at the event. Or yeah. maybe she'll be in like a penthouse on Columbus Avenue on the Upper West Side, like watching from above. 100%, like in a big blanket. Yeah. And this year, Santa will be accompanied on his sleigh by the one and only Cher, who's preparing. Wow. She's preparing to release a 25th anniversary edition of her Grammy winning album, Believe. And she just dropped her new album, Christmas. That's a big get for the parade. I feel like the talent over the last couple of years is definitely less premium than it used to be. This is, Cher is major. This isn't a great lineup. No, it's not. I'm it's so usually like it. a little better. And they usually have a lot of like pretty big country people because it's really like a, a parade that the whole country watches. Yeah, like where's Gavin DeGraw? Honestly, where the fuck is Kelly? Where the fuck? But Kelly's at a place in I her know, life, she, honestly, she does, I think. Where she doesn't have to do things like this. But let me just say something. She has nestled her way into the hearts of millions of Americans. And on Thanksgiving morning, we want to see you. Like that's there's the price. There's a responsibility. That's a, there's a responsibility. That's the price that you pay for being such a joyful part of our lives. Like we want to see you on these big joyful occasions. Yes, I will say though, I think as a, if you're a performer, I think once you get to a certain level, like the Thanksgiving Day Parade is probably like the worst gig on the planet. You don't sing live. You're fucking freezing. You're standing out there forever. It's the crack of dawn and it's a holiday. So if you don't live in New York, you're away from your family. No, I know. But I think there are some people who have a duty, who have a duty to show up for us on those days. Yeah. It's not always fun in games being America's sweetheart. It's not. It's hard work. Someone's got to do it. And Kelly's not doing it. No, so, um, but honestly, like, there should be a few bigger names here. Sorry. I am in agreement. Like, uh, like also a little bit more relevant peeps. I also feel like if Macy's doesn't step it up, like, someone's going to come out from under them. Like, the Netflix Day Parade. And all of a sudden, like, so, Bebe Finn is flying through the air. I'm really glad you brought that up because it does feel like Macy's is hanging on to that partnership by the hair of their chinny chin chin. It's been their thing for so long. And I'm not against them being the sponsor it's so new york it's so classic i think it nods you know to a more simpler time but i agree like the parade has severely gotten worse in terms of everything like production some of those fucking balloons have been around since the 80s and like it's okay like they're not relevant to the kids anymore like clifford can go it's my mom's from the 80s yeah literally <laughs> like they need to step their pussy up majorly and okay. they need to get like a streaming partner like why why doesn't it stream on peacock you know like it needs to be a little bit more it might. 21st century just saying it might stream on peacock it definitely does but like that's how <laughs> irrelevant it is i didn't even know that no 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 like i'm i'm just saying like it's on nbc right yeah so like it definitely goes to peacock after oh no i'm sorry it's on like a bunch of networks N nbc syndicates no, I feel like it's also because I remember Kelty did. Oh, yeah. Like everybody films the parade. I guess. Right. Macy's like doesn't really do it with one. Right. Because I think Kelty was on CBS. I remember that. It's I. 
We'll find out on Thursday. I mean, I feel like... Also, for, for the parents, here are the kid balloons that are coming through. Recurring giant balloons include Bluey, Diary of a Wimpy Kid, Paw Patrol, Ryan's World, Pikachu, Ronald McDonald. Ronald McDonald. Okay, for real? Like Pikachu? Stuart the Minion and SpongeBob SquarePants. Oh, he's doing double duty. <laughs> he's booked. He's booked and busy. Wait, and then new balloons, Beagle Scout Snoopy, Blue Cout and Chugs, Kung Fu Panda's Poe, Leo, Monkey D. Luffy, Pillsbury Doughboy, Yum. And Obsessed. Uncle Dan. They'll also be Lego, Peanuts, Baby Shark, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Sesame Street. Where the fuck is Mickey? Harry's not going to be happy about this. Mickey. Where is Mickey? Miska. Muska. Mickey Mouse. I don't know. Ba, 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 da, 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 da. Hot dog. Da, 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 da. Do, do, da, do, da, da, da. Hot dog. Da, do, da, 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 da. Hot dog, hot dog, hot diggity dog. That song fucking slaps. That song goes so hard and has if no I ever become, business doing so. If I ever become like a true, well-respected vocalist, I will perform at the parade. I will be on the Miki float. I will bring Harry and I will sing that song. But like my, I'll put my own spin on it. More of like an acoustic, you know, I'll have like an accompanying guitar. There's a long version of it on Spotify. Like it goes into this, grab my boots and a sandwich. Let's start a parade. It's get the coconut drum kit. I'm ready to play. It goes, Claudia, like these songs, they go crazy. But, okay, I don't know if this is an insult to you, but it's not meant to be. Oh, I love sentences that start that way. But it's not meant to be. Okay. You should be performing at the Amazing Thanksgiving Day Parade. Okay, that is an insult, but I don't disagree. <laughs> also, if you're an adult watching, my favorite game to play is, like, catch the lip-syncing flubs. I mean. because Because they also have, like, guitar they have like if they're a band they have their instruments if they're not a band they still have like a backup p pianist and nothing is live not the piano not the guitar not the music not the track not the singing and they never know like when to properly start my favorite thing is catching them like fuck up there's so, it's so easy to no, it's, it's like, literally every, like no and like a few years ago it came out that every nobody performs live on the macy's thanksgiving day parade and so they don't have to pretend anymore yeah and they've given and up the, the jig is up the jig is officially up. Oh, Jax is taking a break. Why don't you grace everyone with a song while I blow my nose? I do good so good to get it so It's mom and day is a fun time song. Hot do god so good to get it so Hot hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog. Someone turned the air on like in the middle of the show in here and um, it's just so cold. My nose is running. I also just remembered that I drove to work because it was so fucking cold and it was like the worst mistake ever. There was so much traffic. It would have been so much faster to walk and I parked illegally. Like I know my car is going to be towed when I go outside. Like I just know it. How fun for Ben to pick it up today. Yeah. <laughs> Glad we clears this afternoon. <laughs> um, okay. It feels like the end of the show, but we still have two more stories. Oh my God. I know. Our next story, someone who will never perform at the Thanksgiving Durate. Day Parade, I feel like I can say with confidence. Wait, let me think. Let me think. <laughs> let me think. Are they a singer? Yeah. I don't know. Adele. Oh, facts. Facts. Adele appears to confirm she and Rich Paul are officially married. Uh oh. Adele reportedly confirmed that she and Rich Paul tied the knot. The six-time Grammy winner is said to have shared the news at her longtime friend Alan Carr's comedy gig in L.A. on Saturday, two members of the audience recounted Adele's purported admission to celebrity gossip Instagram account Dumois. They said, I was at Alan Carr's comedy show in L.A. tonight and Adele was in the audience. Alan asked the crowd if anyone got married recently and Adele shouted, I did. Another attendee told Dumois when he asked if anyone got married recently, she yelled, I did. Super cute all around and was super sweet, but dipped right before it ended. Um, I feel like this would be on brand. I think like her and Rich Paul are like, even if they're not legally married, like they're they're in a, like they're legit, you know, they're yeah, steady. Yeah. And her doing it like totally privately is so Adele, like giving us nothing. I know, but I'm happy for her. Like I guess it is Adele, and it isn't because she's like actually public with her relationship right now. I feel like they just didn't have a big wedding. Maybe while she was in Vegas, they were like. 
what yeah, if but like we just? certain things like Adele doesn't fuck around with and like she never shows her son like she's very very she's like a she's a girly and she chats and she loves you know to go out with the girls but when it comes to like her family and her actual private life like she really doesn't share much yeah that's true we didn't even know her son's name for like five years remember and what is his name Antonio something like that yeah right so I actually this is like if true, extremely on brand. I could see it being true. Yeah, and and lovely. And I, I, I feel like whether or not they got married, like they will, will be together for a very long time, if not forever. Like marriage, it's all the same. It's all the same. And like it's nice to for her to go into this marriage. Like, you know, she had to give half. What'd she give her ex guy? $70 million? She did? Yeah, it was like one of those crazy mm-hmm. things. But this is a person who is extremely successful, not on the same level as Adele, but like up there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's going into this now with the knowledge from her first. She's probably much more protected. Yeah. And so I feel good about this. Yeah. And because I feel like people who go through really bad divorces. They like don't, they stop believing in marriage and like love even. And they're just, they become so. Like hard. uh, Yeah. But she's been softened. No, but like if anything, you go into the next one with so much more experience and knowledge and like you know what to do, what you did right, what you did wrong. So I feel like second marriages are can, can be fabulous. Yeah. A new, another chance at love. Speaking of love, are you ready for our fifth of final story? The segues are just writing themselves this afternoon. Claudia, they Morning. literally are. Speaking of love and marriage, first comes love, then comes marriage, then comes a baby in the baby carriage. Let me think, who's pregnant? Who? For Bliss and Zach of Love is Blind. Mm, yeah. Love is Blind's Bliss is pregnant, expecting her first baby. I feel like baby. for them, it wasn't first comes love, then comes marriage. I feel like it was first comes marriage, then comes love. Like First comes they, Irina, then right. comes marriage, then comes love, then comes baby in the baby carriage. And I feel like when they did that Love is Blind reunion, they talked about they were at a fertility doctor. Like they were struggling a little bit. Yeah, and they were showing us the journey. So they've been wanting to start a family and now they are sharing that they are having a baby The couple um, did an exclusive People magazine interview and photo shoot. Bliss said it's a little bit nerve wracking, but I think it's also such a beautiful thing. Babies are miracles and blessings. And I think we've been so open to sharing our journey and our relationship with the world. And this is our next big, beautiful thing. I'm really happy and I hope that it brings joy to other people. It's definitely brought us a ton of joy. That's really nice. Like they, for me, are so random. Like I... I'm I just, I just, yeah, I know you were when we were watching it. Like, I did not believe in these people's love. Like, I just, I couldn't see how, how this could be real. But like we always say, there is proof in the pudding. There's proof in the longevity. They're having a child now. Is this the first Love Is Blind baby? Because Amber and Barnett don't have kids. That's a very good point. Uh, I don't think Lauren and Ka- Cameron Hamilton Speed don't. I feel like People Magazine would have noted that. And there, you know, uh, you know, Bart, what was his name? Bart, no. Um, Bartiste? Yeah, I mean, he had like a baby, but not with someone from the show. Yeah. And so did uh, Mark, who was 24 and Jessica was 34. Like, he had a baby too. So people have had babies, but not couples who got married on the show. Yeah. No, there's a big difference. Like, I feel like this is the first one. I think so too. First that comes to mind for me. Right? Good call. So from their season, they're still going strong and so are Chelsea and Kwame. Yeah. Is that it? I feel like there was another strong couple from their season. All the seasons really like mixed together. I'll have to ask Zach because he's a love is blind expert. (laughs) He'll be so happy to hear about this. No, it's actually really sweet. I should text him it. I'll text him the news. And you're right, like, when we always say like couples who are like really meant to be like start to look alike and I actually think these two look alike when I saw the picture of them holding the bump I'm like oh siblings <laughs> that's so funny like if your if your baby announcement doesn't look like two cousins having a baby like it's not gonna last you know what I've realized well one when people date they start to look like one another when they get married and everything but when you have a child and usually the child looks like a bit of each of you it's like the husband looks like the kid and the kid looks like the the mom. Therefore, the dad and the mom look alike. Like if A equals B and B equals C, then A equals C. Yeah, but A doesn't equal C, but I appreciate the logic. No, a, I'm telling you, start to think, start, you'll see. A equals C. A equals C. <laughs> and what does B equal? A and C. That's the point. 
thank you for asking that question that was like the one thing we learned in math class like i actually understood you no know, and like, it's a equals b and b equals c so like duh a equals c you know that's literally what i'm saying yeah i know i'm not talking about like your dumb theory about the kids i'm talking about like math yeah chain reaction chain reaction right remember when we learned like logic and math that shit was so dumb right but look we're literally we use it in everyday life even one plus one equals sock they didn't teach us that in school but it's the same thinking no we could do like a college course on one plus one equals sock like a like a mini mini we could call session. it sock 101 we could <laughs> So those were actually very good stories. I feel like we all in all covered like eight stories because there were breakout sessions from each of them. There were. And we love to foster breakout sessions in our work. And that's what you'll get in SOC 101. That is, I will say like that part of college, like the big lectures and then like the breakout sessions, what they call it, recitation. That was like some of my least favorite shit of all time. Those TAs thought they were such fucking hot shit. I'm like, calm down. Yeah. TAs, man. Did it ever... Um, was that ever something you wanted to do like as a as an undergrad no because as a dumb bitch I wasn't qualified <laughs> but so are TAs grad students or undergrad no students? they're undergrad students who I guess have excelled in the course question paid to be a TA question mark I believe so question as mark. you fucking should you do all the work for that dumbass professor yeah I've never was struck so much by my TA experience no I was I was like you're a nerd get away from me but also, like, isn't there a, uh, a storyline in Gossip Girl once they get to college? Like, Serena fucks one of the TAs. I think he's a full-blown professor, but yeah. Oh, okay. Because, like, fucking a TA is, like, literally, it's, like, fucking a, a classmate. It's, like, not a big deal. No, of course. Also. Yeah, but we put TAs, like, on a pedestal. It's no, like, you're you literally do. nobody. No, literally, you do. No, I, I think never, everyone does. Okay, first of all, I never really thought twice about my TAs. Maybe it's different at every school, but can someone explain, like, TAs are undergrads. Like, I'm, I didn't say that with certainty. Now I'm just doubting everything. And so are RAs. Yeah. I only say they're undergrads because we didn't have a grad school at Colgate. So if we had TAs, they oh. were students. Oh, NYU was like a grad school, a law school. Right, so it's confusing. Schools. But I yeah, do believe yeah, yeah. that they, just maybe every school is different. Maybe. But I, I am sorry to the TA who hurt you, clearly. No, I honestly just like remember what I just remember thinking. I'm like, you're a loser. Like you, <laughs> like he just really, he was on a fucking power trip. I'm like, calm the fuck down down <laughs> calm down yeah he just thought he was such hot shit and like he was like a decently looking person and i think he just like loved being like a teacher he loved the ta life yeah and like back then like you like you respected authority and now in hindsight i'm like you're literally two years older than me sit the fuck down bitch yeah he was your wing leader yes <laughs> yes it's giving uh datos Date Danatos. Danatos. It's giving Danatos. Danatos. So that's our show. It's our final one of the week, but don't fret because if you're really missing us, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will have podcast episodes going up on Patreon. Tomorrow's Patreon episode is the fast five stories you need to go know for the Thanksgiving table. So we'll be combing through the news, breaking it down for you, you know, with as much certainty as we can, and also giving you a hot take to bring to the table and kind of like stir shit up. Start stuff. Why not? What if we just started stuff? What if we just burn this fucking dinner to the ground? But the Stanley would stay standing. Ooh. Um, so that's, that's how our you, show. And that's how you bring it full circle in Sock 101. We'll see you on Patreon. Also, make sure to head over to shoptoastmerch.com to get your holiday wenchmas sets. Hope everybody has an amazing Thanksgiving. Um, I'm thankful for you, Jax. I'm thankful for you, turd. I'm thankful for the toast and the toasters who tune in every day and just love to giggle with us. I love you all. Do strong prayers for Theo. Please keep him in your thoughts and prayers. Theo's non-denominational, so he will accept prayers from all religions. He loves all. And yeah. Do strong. Love ya. Thank you so much for listening to The Toast, the Millennial Morning Show, where we deliver the fast five stories that you need to know every Monday through Friday on YouTube. So if you're watching us on YouTube, please feel free to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. We're also available as a podcast anywhere. Podcasts can be found on Spotify, iTunes, Stitcher, Public Video, Wire, Radio, CastBox, all the places where you listen to podcasts. Find us The Toast, leave a five-star review about how beautiful, stunning, and wickedly talented we are. Hope you guys have an amazing holiday weekend. We love you, and we're back in studio on Monday. Love ya. Bye.